I recently bought this Kesker soldering station and I did a lot of research before and there seemed to be a lot of really good reviews on it and it was really inexpensive and I was looking for a new soldering station anyway so I went ahead and bought it. You can go ahead and look up some reviews online. I'm actually not going to review it here today other than to say I've been pleased with it over the last couple weeks since I've had it. But there was one issue and when I googled it I saw a lot of people complain about it as well but yet I didn't actually find a solution anywhere. There were a couple hints to the solution that people had but you know there really wasn't a concrete video saying here's how you fix the problem and so the problem is is that this has a shake sensor inside you can hear it rattling around in there and what happens is is that detects when you pick the uh, soldering iron up out of its stand and then if it's in sleep mode it goes out of sleep mode and heats back up again the problem is is that even with this setting completely stationary that vibration sensor just constantly is going off and there's a little indicator uh, and I don't have this powered on but right to the right on the lower right hand corner here just to the left of the um, the symbol there's a little dot and that dot indicates a shake motion and so if you've if you've got one of these and it's just sitting in its stand and not doing anything and you see that dot come on and off that definitely is indicating that the shake sensor is being triggered even though you may not be touching it now why is this an issue? Well, one of the things that I really liked about this station was that it would go to sleep and it wouldn't stay on all the time. So it's got a few different modes and you can look those up on some other videos, but after about 10 minutes, it'll go into a sleep mode where it'll go down to about 150 degrees Celsius. And then again, this is settable, but then after about 20 minutes, it'll just shut itself off entirely. And that was really what I wanted. Well, the problem is, is that with that shake sensor, the second it would go into standby, it would immediately come out of standby because it would detect uh, motion, even though there were no motions. So I looked around online. Like I said, I didn't find any conclusive videos as to what to do. And I did see a number of people said this is a fault and they just simply sent it back to Banggood and they replaced it and it was fine again. So clearly this is an intermittent issue, but I'm pretty sure the solution is quite simple and it only takes a few minutes to actually do. Now the problem is, is that this isn't grounded so the tip is not actually grounded if this isn't making a good solid connection right here between these two pieces and this is soldered on i'll show you in a second and then the second is is that the case isn't actually earth grounded which is a, a, another issue in of itself so i've already done this to this unit just because i wasn't even sure if that was going to fix the problem but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take it apart and i'm going to show you what i did so you can do that to yours as well So to get this apart, all you need to do is take the four screws off the back and you only need to take the top two off the front and the top just comes off. And this is a nice little anodized aluminum. And then this whole little module slides out. You'll see there's a wire on it connecting it. Uh, now this is the battery, a little battery backup for a clock. I don't know if it actually does anything else. I don't think it does. This is taped on the top. So just carefully pry that off. This doesn't really matter. We'll just kind of tuck this in when we're done. So what you're gonna wanna do is just unplug this so that we can get this board out. And there's really two things that you wanna do. And the first is, is you wanna ground the case. Now the back metal plate or the aluminum plate here, uh, it, this is a wire that I added. And all I did was I just have a small little tiny M3 screw with a nut and a washer on it. And then I just put a wire over to the ground. Now the ground is gonna be the, the long plug here as well. And I just soldered it on. And make sure you use a relatively large gauge wire. This is an 18 gauge wire. You definitely don't wanna put a real light piece of wire in there just for safety reasons. And then just solder it on to the connector right there. It's pretty straightforward to do. And then the big thing that you wanna do is that this anodizing on the outside acts as an insulator. And that isn't gonna be a great conductor. So what I did is I took my little Dremel with a little sand mo module on the front and I went ahead and roughed up all of the space behind this nut. And this is the important part, you wanna do it on these components here where they meet up, so on these holes. So on the back side, just take that same sander. Now you could use a regular sander or a file to do that, or even just a knife if you wanted to scuff it up. But of course, a little 
uh, Dremel tool with a little sanding module does really, really, really well. Now you don't need to do every single one of them. I just did these two on this side. And so now I've got a good ground reference from my board to the earth ground to this plate. Now, this is where things are a little bit different that I saw in some of the other videos. Make sure you also sand these module parts right here where the screw terminals go in. That way you've got a good solid connection. Now that alone, probably in my case, it definitely didn't actually solve my problem. I put it all back together and I still, if I just take the multimeter and go from the tip here to the ground, to the earth lead, I still didn't have continuity. Now the reason is that, and again, you don't wanna take this apart because this connector, as well as this connector, well, this one actually would screw out, but this one won't, is actually put on and then soldered in on the back side. Now you could take this plate out if you wanted to. Uh, in fact, you might wanna do that when you, when you um, in order to scuff this up. But what you wanna do is you wanna reach right behind here and using a uh, little needle nose pliers, loosen this nut that's behind that uh, front connector. So loosen that all the way up. Now it's not gonna come out because again, it's soldered in when they put that connector in and you'll see it can't come out on this side. Then what I did is I took a real small file and you can see it right here on the video and I soldered or I filed off as much of that anodizing coating as I could. And it doesn't require all of it to be off, but you definitely want enough to make a good connection. Once you scuff all that up, go ahead and tighten that nut back up. Make sure you also do this end because otherwise you're gonna have a front plate that's not connected to ground. So take that same Dremel, clear, uh, scuff up these here. If you took out just the top ones, I would recommend doing the top two. If you took them all out, you might as well do all four of them. And then also make sure you do the body plate as well. So once you've got all those scuffed up, you should now have really good continuity between ground and the tip of your soldering iron. Now, if you wanna test this beforehand, like if you're having this problem and you're just not sure if this is the issue, what you can do is with the module, with the power supply in and the module plugged in, if you run your multimeter in continuity mode, from here, from the tip, back to ground, it should be connected. Uh, of course, this has to be connected in at the time, or you could just check the connector on the front. Now, if you don't get continuity, then you definitely don't have um, enough of the anodizing scraped off. Now, it's possible that when they put this connector on that it is making a connection. So I'm guessing a lot of these modules do have continuity um, back on that ground plane. But <laughs> based on what I saw on the internet, a lot of them do not. So that's how you can check that and make sure once you've got everything all put together. Now this isn't going to have a good solid connection until we get those screws in because they're gonna be what makes that ultimate connection. Uh, but again, just with continuity meter, go from the tip of your iron to the ground right here, the long pin. And if you do not have continuity, go back and check each of those connections to make sure that you've got enough of that anodizing taken off. Now with respect to the battery, I'm just gonna tuck mine in here. It actually isn't gonna hurt anything. As you see, it's completely shrink wrapped, so it's not gonna have any issues with shorting things out. So that's the big solution in order to solve this very simple, simple problem. It's just unfortunate that on a brand new soldering station that you need to do anything. Um, but like I said, it's only a five minute task. Another thing, and you'll see this if you Google or look up on YouTube, this particular model, a number of people have also commented that the switch is backwards, which it is. So I've also flipped mine around. So up would be on, down would be off, which would be the standard. If you wanna flip that around, now would be the perfect time to do it. And it's actually quite simple. All you wanna do is just take a sharp um, flathead screwdriver and push down on the top and the bottom here. Mine actually has a little mark on it, it says 1.5. Uh, and then this will come out the front, or I guess in the back in this case, Turn it 180 degrees and snap it back in. You don't need to desolder anything. Obviously be a little bit careful because they are soldered to the board. You don't want to break those. Uh, but anyway, I hope that helps out. I know I looked around and couldn't find why the shake sensor wasn't working, uh, which is why I went ahead and did this mod. And I have confirmed that once I've done that mod, it works perfectly. Now my soldering iron will go to sleep. And even if I bump the table, it's not enough to trigger that shake sensor. So it's got a good sensitivity on it. And now it will immediately, after the 10 minutes, go to sleep and it will stay in sleep until it goes into standby, or uh, uh, I'm sorry, it'll go into standby mode and then it'll go into sleep mode. And then when I do pick it up, it works perfectly. So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, if you have any other comments, leave them below.